I'm Christine, and this is a quick stretch for neck and shoulders. So I recently had a cold where I was feeling congestion and chest congestion, head congestion, and I would have to sleep upright in bed and stuff. I got all this tension in my neck and my shoulders along the way. And it just kind of reminded me of what it's like when we have a knot in the back and we have different types of tension that's really preoccupying, right? It's kind of, kind of hard to ignore. You're like, oh God, this thing back there, it's bugging me. And so I last night did this stretch routine before going to bed and okay, the knots aren't gone and the tension is not completely gone, but my goodness, did it ever help. It took the edge off. And so I wanted to share that just quick routine with you today. So for this quick um, stretch, you will need a couple of props. So I've got a bolster and two blocks. Um, if you can't, if you don't have a bolster, I do have a little video that you can check out to show you how you can make one yourself with some towels at home. So that is always an option. Now, just to start, we're just going to sit and you can always elevate your hips up on a block or a bolster if you like. And we're just going to do a little side stretch. Okay. So sitting in just a way so that you feel like your hips can be a little bit lower than your knees. Well, just walk your fingertips over, keep both sit bones down as you lift the arm up and then arch over to the side. Just get a nice side stretch there, keeping the shoulders relaxing away from the ears, getting a little bit of length between the fingertips and the hip bone. Try not to squish up and collapse in the lower side while you stretch out and lengthen the upper side. You can even use your breath in a side stretch like this. I always find it becomes a stretch from the inside out if I take deep breaths into the rib cage. <sighs> Just feel that stretch deepening with every inhale. <sighs> One more deep breath. <sighs> On the inhale, come up. Just to encourage some length, exhale, relax. To the other side. And settling into it, relaxed shoulders, both side waists are nice and long. Keeping both hip bones sit bones, let's say, nice and anchored down so that your foundation is steady and you're stretching up, out, and away from the foundation. And then from there, deep breaths into the rib cage so that you're not just stretching the side of the body, but you're even stretching the intercostal muscles, those muscles that are between your ribs. Every inhale, you get a little expansion, a little deepening of the stretch. Every exhale, you just get to relax a little bit into it. Good. Use your inhale to come up and exhale, relax. Good. And then from here, we'll just do some nice straightforward neck stretching. So what we can do actually is just to bring the shoulders around and back a couple of times, just loosening up all of that structure, especially if you're feeling extra tense and um, extra stiff. And then one last time as the shoulders come up, back and slide them down, and you'll feel there's a bit of broadness across the collarbones and the chest. We wanna sit nice and tall here, and then keeping the whole torso upright, just drop the head straight forward, and then roll one ear to shoulder, and then back, chin to chest, roll the other ear to shoulder. We'll go back and forth a couple of times, just like that. And you'll probably notice there are these little spots on this journey around that are more tense and more tender than others. And we will definitely bring a little attention to those spots in a moment, but for now, just a little movement. Good. Now we're going to go all the way around if that feels okay in your neck. Some people don't like to let their head drop back. If that's the case, just keep doing the half circle around. But if it feels okay, you can even now lift your chin up and bring your head back as you go around. I'll do about three in one direction. And then we'll do three in the other direction. Good. Now, you can also have a little emphasis as you go up with the chin. Can you almost clench your jaw just lightly, lifting up with your chin, the skin of your chin? might make a funny face as I do that, but I find that it really deepens the stretch along the front of the neck. Good. And then back to center. 
And now we'll get into those specific spots that we're feeling really tense, right? So go ahead to one side and then find that one spot on that side that's like, oh my God, there's my stretch. That's so tight, that's so stiff. Let me just hang out there for a sec. And I want you to think about just hanging out there for a sec, right? So you're not necessarily doing the stretch. You're letting the weight of your head, your head's pretty heavy. You're letting the weight of your head just kind of gently pull down and increase that stretch. And as you settle into it, you might want to take the opposite hand to the ground just to create even more length in that direction. And then you can take this hand and just kind of rest it. You're not pulling your head down. You're not pulling your head down. We don't need to wrench ourselves into something. We'll just make it worse, right? We'll hurt ourselves. You just want to put a little weight on there so you get the weight of your head, gravity, now the weight of your hand, and all oh, the stretch is getting deeper. Good. Maybe you got another spot you want to do on that side too. Hang out there. There are a lot of muscles that hold up our head that attach in different spots through the shoulders, under the collarbones, they even attach in through the sternum, into the back. And uh, they can get tense. They can totally get tense for so many different reasons. In my case, it was because I was feeling sick. You can go over and do the other side now. Uh, sometimes it happens just from stress. Sometimes it happens from repetitive movements or let's say repetitive non-movements. <laughs> so like the whole, I sit all day at a computer thing, like we just, the, the body gets tense because it's not moving around. So that's only normal. But it does also mean that there's so many different possible angles that you might need to bring your head into to find the muscle that's tight for you today or the tightest. Maybe you got another one on that side you want to hang out with for a bit. Another possibility is to just go straight down. So you're still keeping the spine really, really tall as you just drop your chin to your chest. And then maybe you're just interlacing your fingers and resting on the back of the head. Again, it's just weight that you're adding. It's not pulling in any way. Good. And you can release all of that. Relax and just shake everything out a little bit. Good. And one more stretch before we come down. We're going to do a couple of things on the ground. So in this one, again, we're going to think about getting the front of the neck. This is often very neglected for stretching. Um, and yet it's often the culprit of all of our, our neck and shoulder pains and different things. And it, well, especially if you clench your jaw a lot, you might not even know you do it. You might grind your teeth at night. Um, so anyway, this is often very neglected and yet often very tense. A lot of my massage clients, I end up in there on their necks. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to take the hand on one side of the neck and actually just kind of pull the skin down towards the collarbone as you lift the head back. You should feel kind of weird, kind of tight, kind of funny. You can even open and close your jaw a couple of times. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, something's happening there. Good. And then do the other side. Beautiful. All right. Now we're gonna come down and we're gonna use one block and the bolster. Okay, so, so one block to catch your head and one bolster that's going to go right underneath your shoulder blades. So as you're lying down on your bolster, you might need to reposition it a couple times. I want you to think about getting your arms up and over, right? So you don't have your arms on it, okay? And you don't have your elbows down here, okay? I don't want your bolster like under your traps at the top there. I really want it to go, for women, you know, we're thinking about like the bra line, and for men, you know, we're thinking about the bra line. You know where that is. I know you know where it is. All right. Oh, good. You need something there to catch your head. Oh, that's better. Right, and you can play with the height of the block. Maybe if your neck's really tender, you actually want to have your head not falling back so far. Or you can go with the mid height or the lower height, or maybe your head's going all the way to the ground. It really depends on what's going on with your head and your neck. Good. Arms up and over. And we'll take about three breaths right there. And again, you can kind of breathe into your rib cage as you expand upwards. 
Good. Now we're going to play with the position of our arms. So, of course, respecting any mobility issues you may have in your arms, if you've got like a rotator cuff thing going on or frozen shoulder or any type of real injuries in your shoulders, you might not want to play too, too much with the position of your arms. But if you do have the capacity for it, try just changing the angles of your arms and take like three breaths in a new spot and your arms are more out to the sides. Maybe lifting a little bit more. I don't know about you, but these are the moments when I start to realize that, oh yeah, there is something different going on on either side of my body. And maybe a little higher. And see if you can actually relax your arms there. It might feel like you're almost holding them up in a, a protective stance. And see if, you, see if you can. Maybe you can release. Maybe you can let go. If you're feeling too much arch in your lower back, by the way, your legs don't need to be straight. You can have your knees bent. Eventually, maybe even finding that you've got your arms up overhead. And this is when I kind of go, oh, yeah, that's what I needed right there. Just a little lift to the back of the heart from the bolster while I stretch. And you can actively reach the arms out and long and point the toes away. Ah. And then we're going to come back down with the arms a little bit, a little bit, pause. Maybe a little bit more, pause. A little bit more, pause. Until you're back into the more traditional version of this posture. Good. And here we're going to interlace the fingers and actually pick up the back of the head and reach your chin up to your chest while you've got the bolster back there giving you some lift. Should feel interesting. You can rock your head a bit side to side. We're going to sit up. Move your props to the side. Come back to line your back and we'll do a spinal twist. So in a spinal twist, you could simply just roll your knees to one side, turn your head the other side, or you can go a little deeper by bringing your knees into your chest and rolling them over. Or you could even cross the top leg over the right, the bottom leg as you come over. Just make sure that you've got both shoulder blades on the ground as you turn your gaze in the opposite direction of your knees. And get some nice long breaths there. Use an inhale to come up. And then whatever version of your twist you did on the first side, go ahead and do it now on the second side. I like to even shimmy my shoulders a little bit so that, oh, okay, there we go. They're flat on the ground again. And I turn the gaze. And the reason you want your shoulders to stay flat on the ground here is because if your whole body goes along with you, you're not twisting anymore. You're just rolling over. <laughs> right? So the idea is that we want to, with any type of stretch, there's going to be one place that's anchored that we then stretch out and away from. So in a twisting stretch, we just keep the upper body as steady as possible to the ground and then we start taking the rest of the spine around the other opposite way. Good. And inhale up and release. Then we'll come up and we're gonna do that fish pose again, but this time we're gonna use two blocks. Okay, so remember you had one for the head and one for the back of the shoulders. Now, there are different heights that you can play with. Remember, we could have gone a little higher over here to catch your head if it was just too far back for your head to fall back. Well, the same can go for this. So the block is a little bit more pressure at the back of the heart and can be uncomfortable. And depending on the mobility that you have in your thoracic spine, even this height can feel intense. So don't hesitate to go lower with your block 
and still get to that pressing lifting opening. Um, I wouldn't go here. That's a little too much for the thoracic spine for most bodies, unless you are a very, very, very tall person and have a very, very, very long spine. <laughs> right? So most people are going to be right here. All right. And you might need to kind of hold that block and reposition it a couple times because I want the tips of your shoulder blades to find their way onto the block, right? So while I've got my arms up overhead trying to figure it out, my shoulder blades have actually slid up my back. And then as I go and lay down, my shoulder blades are sliding down my back. So you might have to play around with that a little bit to find the right spot. And then play around with that other one under your head. Now it's starting to feel, if you've got knots in your back like I do, now it's starting to feel a little bit like the massage does. Oh, I'm totally due for a massage. Totally. And again, we're going to play with the arm placements. So every time you're trying to relax, you're trying to let the body settle into this so that the weight of your body, gravity, is what is helping you get some release and get some opening. And often when we have, change of position of your arms again, when we have tension in the back of the body, it's because the front of the body is getting tightened and shortened. So this is why even though I'm talking about neck and shoulder stuff, like knots behind your shoulder blades, this is this opening of the front of the body is actually really, really helpful. Because that knot in the back of your body is a muscle that's like, working really, really, really hard to try and regain some balance in the body while other muscles are overworking and taking the load off of it. So it's like going, no, 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 you got to come back over here. So it gets tight, it gets tense, it gets sore. Change the position again. And in this one, once I've got the block there, I kind of wiggle a bit because uh, it feels so good. Like massaging out all that tension. Uh, and you can go ahead and start bringing your arms back down again in increments. And if you got that one spot that feels so sweet, you can stay there. And you can be in this pose for as long as you want, whether you're on the bolster or on the blocks. We're just going to keep it brief as we do it together here. But feel free when this video is over to just keep going. Because it's so nice. Most people love this posture. Go ahead and one more time, interlacing the fingers behind the head, picking the head up. And this time we're going to go ahead and rock the head a little bit more side to side and see if you can actually relax your head into your hands so that it's your hands that are moving your head and not your neck muscles. Tricky. I'm telling you right now, it's tricky. Totally. But you can try it. Let's see if you can play that little game with yourself. Good. And then here I'm going to reach my fingers forward and use a little bit of core as I roll up. Oh, interlace the fingers, press them out, just round the back a bit. Oh. And there it is. That's my little routine when I'm feeling that tension in my neck and shoulders. And it just feels good to regain some mobility there when everything's getting tight and clenched up and sore. Um, of course, all yoga tends to help us stay away from being tight and clenched up and sore. And in these cases, sometimes a massage really is what the doctor ordered. But at least at home, in just a few minutes, we can find some relief. I hope that this gives you some relief and that you have enjoyed. And I will see you here again next time. Namaste.